everyone, Rascal here. And Mama. And welcome to our World of Paws series. Today we're covering the world famous manga anime series, My, My Hero, Hero Academia. Academia. Known by anime and superhero fans around the world, today we're discussing Kohei Horikoshi's legendary work as the franchise has changed the superhero genre forever. Yes! And as usual, in this series, No Holds Bar, we say everything that we normally don't say in a normal podcast. Right. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and be sure to click the notification bell to get updates on Paul's animation video. Yes. Now, hopefully like us, you've just recently seen the Heroes Rising movie in theaters. Right. In the U.S. or Canada, if you're really, really lucky in Japan. Right. And you've loved it as much as we do. And this motivated us to do a World of Paws segment on My Hero Academia franchise and fandom. Yes. And there's just so much to this franchise. And considering we had heard of it at first, but it was a while before we actually watched it. About a few years before we actually set it out and okay, let's see how this show is. And that was... Well, also before it became available on Toonami. <laughs> right. Yeah, because the only time we started to watch it was when they finally released an English dub airing right. on the channel. Correct. And then about like maybe five, five episodes were available. Like, hey, I've heard about this. I keep seeing it online. We were talking about it. it says superhero show. So maybe we can see what it is. Cause I don't know what the heck it was when people were talking about it. It's some weird thing <laughs> someone came up with, and then finally got to see it. And like the first two episodes, we were hooked. Yeah. That was that. And then also we were able to read the manga from the beginning. And yes. we've now begun our own collection of My, My Hero Academia manga, and we signed up for pre-orders so that, you know, the day they come out, they get shipped from Amazon. Thank you, Amazon. And we've also become fans of the spinoffs, uh, Vigilante. Uh-huh. And Smash. Right. And School Breeze. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, we've, we've come to love each and every facet of this fandom um, in terms of the, the reading material and the visual material. Right. And these, when you read it, actually, like, when, you, when you hear about it, at first, I know for some people, you know, even it happens sometimes, where it's like, when you, when you, have, you already have Marvel, you got the MCU, you got DC, and whatever they're trying to do. And then you get here Academia, and if you don't know the show, you kind of think, oh, okay, this is just something else to add to the pile, something like Marvel, something like DC. Mm -hmm. well, it's in its own category. It takes inspiration from Marvel and DC, mostly Marvel, but it still stands out on its own. Mm -hmm. Even with the references, not just trying to blatantly rip off everything you see, Absolutely. or American uh, movies or shows and stuff, those just have references or Easter eggs to it, then if you're a hardcore fan, you immediately recognize it, and it's done out of fun, not out of because we can. I think Horikoshi has become the Miyazaki of the superhero genre. Yeah. Absolutely. In anime. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know a show has truly made it when it becomes parts of controversial stories. And Horikoshi has absolutely made it because there's different aspects of the manga itself that have become controversial. And people, until this happens, you haven't made it. Right. So he has indeed made it because he's had several. And this particular anime and manga, I don't think, was expected to excel the way that it has. I mean, I don't think there's any way that anyone believed this would just shooting to the stratosphere and no matter what is happening no matter what controversies are coming up it's it's still just shooting through the stratosphere right, right. and it is unequal and unparalleled right now for an um, I would have to say a, a product combination anime manga 
at this time. Because I know there's people out there that are peers like Naruto and One Piece and so forth. So I don't want anyone to think we're saying this is better than anything that's ever come out before and after. Now. What we're saying is right now, at this moment in time, My Hero Academia is the piece de resistance of the anime world. Yes. And especially since it's pretty much exploded in popularity because when it first came out, even Kohei wasn't expected to be on this level of popularity. Absolutely. Because his other mangas have just been come and go or didn't really go anywhere. So what he did by Hero Academia, he thought it was just going to be another one that he'll do a little bit of mm -hmm. and then he'd be done. But then uh, it just suddenly started catching fire and people, not just in Japan, a lot of people in America, especially with the Marvel Cinematic Universe taking off, and people had actually started to, uh, uh, you know, started to get a little tired of the uh, Western comics because of the Standard quality that we're watch. getting. It's, uh, right. it's become more of a trope, but you can actually see the influence on Horikoshi of the American superhero genre. I mean, there's no doubt, there's no way that this was written without his love of it. And right. his love of it comes through. Right. So somehow, some way, his love for it developed into something fantastic and wonderful and unique and different. And it's just, all the elements that are needed have all just come together. Right. Perfectly. Right. And I love using this analogy a lot it's like the pieces of a puzzle have just all come together perfectly at this time for my hero academia right right because like we, like we said and part the, of it's the writing part of it is the writing the imagination of horikoshi right and the exemplary writing and right it's definitely a standout point for it because because you read it, I mean, yeah, if you go through, like, the outline and stuff over, like, yeah, it's, it's cliche, but when you read it, it doesn't feel like that at all. No, not it at feels all. like something totally different. The characters are all vastly different from each other. The, the villains are really different. And everything about it is just spectacular to read. And it's all these different moods in one. It could be action and it could be drama there could be some horror it could be comedy when it wants to be it could be all of these things and i feel like this is too much or this doesn't mix in well it's like reading a comic book right and another thing is as you you pointed out are the characters and how every single character is different now one of the more difficult jobs of a writer is to make the characters uh, diverse in terms of you can't see this character and think of this character or they all seem fleshed out of one or they all seem to be um, bouncing off of one character and everyone is pretty much copy and paste yeah. yes copy and paste that's the great thing but in this series every single character you got let's not even go to class 1b let's just start with class 1a 20 students and every single student is different different personality different look different attitudes different quirks Then you got class 1b and he does it again with another 20 students Then you've got the pro hero teachers and he does it again with them Then you've got the pro heroes that are out, you know saving the day every day and he does the same thing And then you got some lower level characters uh, like uh, Suka Uchi and others and they're still all different right. and you've got just this myriad of characters where nobody is the same and I know they're gonna some people yeah but Suka Uchi looks like Tanya yeah we are aware of there's some similarities sometimes in the looks but the characters could not be more different and that is the brilliant part of this man's writing how he's got this file cabinet of characters and then he keeps adding like with the movie and you got some more villains and they're all distinctly different and how his brain does this it's like he's a little anime uh, genius the writing I should have manga genius say. he's a manga writing genius that's what he is right. because the brilliant way that he does this is absolutely wow 
yeah, I mean, it's hard to put it into words sometimes because it's like, uh, and that's it. <laughs> and then he also animates his own story. And again, the characters couldn't look more different from each other and be more different. And he doesn't. And when you read the manga, you can tell the love he has for every character that he draws, whether the hero or villain. And this character, I really like this is so, so Oh, this character, I really love the way this character puts his foot to the left. And you're reading it, and it's just this love for what he does. And it comes through in every single character. And you can't help loving what he does because that love comes through. And he never has to speak a word of English, ever. Right. But that love comes through in everything he does. And again, here we go. He's brilliant. He's absolutely oh, brilliant. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm glad you said that because you actually reminded me. There was actually this one thing that I show Mama way later. And it's so later because uh, by the time I showed her, it was probably last. 2019, by the time of this recording, it was 2019. This is 2020, people. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, in case I'm watching 2025 or okay. something. Uh, she, I told her about the uh, creator and never seen a picture of him. And there are pictures of him, but they're kind of like far in between. They only have like a select few from when he was out at the uh, conventions or he's been invited out somewhere. And uh, I wanted to show Mama, like, here, you want to know what the career looks like? i like, oh, okay, and here. And then he had this giant cat mask on, and everything was covered. He said, well, what, what is that? <laughs> That's the cradle. Oh, Mike, where is his face? <laughs> and, and he actually wears the uh, cat face with him to interviews, or he's on camera or in public because he's very shy and about his uh, personal look, so he wears that. And she actually got to see one picture where he didn't have the mask on, but I was hilarious. She said, a silly goose. <laughs> oh, <I'm> like, what? <laughs> my mom thought, my mom thought it was so funny. And I was like, where, where's the face? It's the cat mask. Oh. <laughs> and now I'm used to it, so next. now it's become, right, next. Now it's become, okay, it's just a part of him. Yeah. Another very wonderful part to horror right. coaching. Now it explains why some of these villains have a bunch of masks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I remember we were discussing the manga, and I would say, well, this character seems like it's a part of Horikoshi. And this part, and you would say, wow, Mom, that's good, because he's actually said this. And he's actually said that, and somehow <laughs> I can tell these little foxes of his own personality that comes out in the characters. And again, he's like... And... Please don't lambaste us for saying this. It reminds me of Lucas. George Lucas's baby Star Wars. It, that was his baby from childhood. He birthed it and he cared for it and he nurtured it. And there'll never be another Star Wars ever. And in the um, manga superhero genre, there'll never be another Horikoshi. Mm -hmm. Because this is different from anything that's out there. Yes, I know there's going to be people that say it's similar. And of course, there's many works that remind you of other works that are being done in similarities. But it stands, as we've said, in a category all its own. Um, another thing I want to point out that's really exciting about the My Hero Academia work is that the manga is adhere to very closely in the anime and that's another thing that makes it spectacular you read it and the action is right there you can picture it you see it in your head you get excited reading it and then it's animated and it's no different again brilliance the brilliance of a full metal alchemist where the, the manga and the anime go hand in hand now I do love that he has these little special snippets and scenes just for Canadian and American viewers right. that weren't included in the manga, and we love it when it happens. Right. But it follows us so closely that, again, it attests to the brilliance of his style of writing. Right. 
And it's, and it's, it's f hilarious that you mentioned George Lucas too because it's obvious that Kohei loves Star Wars. Absolutely. There are Star Wars references all throughout the show <laughs> and the names of the places, names of the quirks or powers, and even have the thing with the all for one and one for all yes. thing. You can think it's Darth Vader and Obi-Wan and stuff. It's like, oh, there's a bunch of Star Wars stuff in here. Yes, and there's also references to it in the new Heroes Rising movie. Right. When you see it, if you haven't, it'll be obvious right. to you as well. Right. And of course, mentioning the uh, Two Heroes movie as well. It's oh, that was spectacular. Right. We've seen that I don't know how many times, and I could sit and watch it again. Like, <laughs> <seen that. laughs> right? And we have seen that one too long before, of course, Heroes Rising. And even before then, it just showed that no matter what format that the franchise is in, it excels. Mm -hmm. Because we didn't know how it was gonna be, we figured okay, it's gotta, it's gotta be great because it's here Academia. We, but every time it still surpasses your expectations. Mm -hmm. You know it's gonna be good, but you expect it to be just like exponentially good and just like just d destroy everything else that comes out at the same time. Right. It was so big, you know, like like you said with Heroes Rising that uh, Disney was trying to compete with it in uh, Japan by having um, The Rise of Skywalker come out um, the same day. It originally came out in December, on December 20th in Japan. Right. So they kind of had the same day, so more people, I guess, would go see that because it's a bigger uh, blockbuster, but people still went to see the other movies. So. Yes, okay. <laughs> now another thing that brings us all together, of course, are the Japanese and the English dub actors. And by seeing the movie, the Japanese voice actors do a fantastic job. Right. But of course, we love the English voice dub actors. And they bring the anime to life in a way that makes it real for us and makes us love the characters. And again, adds to the distinction of making every character individual and unlike any other character out there. The voice acting talent is superior. They are uh, voice actors who have done a lot of um, English dub for yes. Funimation. Right. And um, Well, yeah, Funimation, that's usually they work for if it's like a certain dubbing company, then those specific people right. work for them. So whatever projects are being used with them, then you'll hear those same group of people all the time. Right, and there's one more company on the side. Yeah, they're, they're, sure we've heard. We've heard of exactly Anaplex. The there we go. And, Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. So they just bring these characters to life and make you love them, and they make the characters the characters. So that when you're reading the manga, these are the voices you're hearing in your head when you read it. Right. Automatically, those voice actors are reading the lines to you right. in your head and it becomes even more exciting and even more fantastic. Right, because so, you can always hear someone, Daga! Right, and then you've got the cosplay for this fandom that is just, again, exemplary, outstanding, fantastic. I love the way they go all out and they get the detail down. Just, I mean, every little detail, including three dots that appear on Bakugo's outfits, is fantastic. And... The cosplay is some of the best out there. Mm -hmm. We are taking as much effort to do as much detail anymore for DC and for Marvel. Right. And it's unfortunate because the people who put these outfits together, a lot of them aren't professionals. They aren't people who went and bought the outfits already made. But, you know, it's great for you to support them by doing that on Amazon and other um, outlets that are available. A lot of people have uh, Twitter accounts where you can buy the wigs and things through them, support them. But the detail some of these people go through in making their own costumes is just fascinating. And you see the love that they have for this franchise and for the characters. And it's just fantastic. When we went to see the movie... Um, you'll also see in our podcast, we have a picture of a young lady who dresses as Deku. And she had everything down, even to the little uh, the little freckles that appear on his face. Right. It's like, oh my gosh, how can you not love this cosplay? How can you not love it? Oh my gosh, it? it's Deku! Yes. <laughs> and it's like, you could, it was, 
impossible not to see her. It was impossible not to pay attention to her. It was impossible not to know how much she loves the franchise. Right. And, and as you said, there's just so many lovable characters or ones that you can't stand. Either way, everyone, in a way, like uh, Voltron had at one point, every character has their own fandom. That's correct. And their own shit. Please stop. <laughs> but, yeah. That's it's, interesting you said <laughs> some people, you, you, they love some characters and they hate some characters. It's true. Yeah. And what's really amazing is that in this fandom, it can be characters that are popular that some people love and hate and some characters that are not popular. And it's the same thing. Yes. So it's yeah, not it's, like you've got certain characters that yeah. get hate uh, right. and it's not certain characters that get love. It seems like there's a dichotomy for every single character in this fandom. Right. And, and it's funny because they, they have a poll every year for a show to jump where you vote for your favorite character. And then at the end of the month... They have probably, they uh, put it together the vote, show you most popular character. And, and now we get to vote also, I can't remember the name of the site, that we get to, Biz Media. Yeah. We get to participate in and give our votes as well. Right. And every year, Bakugo wins. And I have to say that my favorite from the very beginning was uh, Todoroki. Yeah. And I never dreamt in a billion years that my second favorite would become Bakugo. But my favorite se- favorite character has become Bakugo. You know that I adore Deku. Deku. He's precious. And no matter what happened, he's just precious. And I love Deku. And I don't even have to mention him being a favorite because he's a favorite. He is the, he's the Deku. He's going to be the Izuku Midoriya. And you just love him. Bakugo. The, the way the character has grown, character development, and the way that he has proven that he wants to be a hero just as much as Deku, he says even more, and the skills that he has, and the love that he, he has for everything about being a pro hero, and it just comes through. And again, it's back to Horikoshi's writing. He takes this character who in the beginning of the first episode seems just like a bully that's mindless, and just all self-centered, and he cre- makes his character grow into someone that you end up respecting and loving as a character. Oh my goodness! Mm-hmm. The the depth of this writing and the brilliance. Yes, I keep fangirling over Horikoshi. Yes, he's brilliant. Yes, he is absolutely brilliant. And to have me go from oh, why is he in the Deku? I don't like him too. I love Bakugo. Yeah. It's like, right? It's like, what the <laughs> hell <laughs> happened? <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's hilarious because we even see some people say, oh, Bakugo's a bully. And at first you think, okay, and you want to go, be... how far back are you watching? Right. At first you're thinking, it's like, okay, maybe they're first starting right. the series because that's how everyone gets anyway. But then they're talking about like, but season four saying, but he's still a bully. Like, what the, he, we're not watching the same show, are we? Like, he hasn't we're definitely done not anything. reading the same manga. Like, he hasn't done anything in five to six years. What <laughs> is he bullying? <laughs> I think we also need to mention how Horikoshi has done girl power from the very beginning exactly. of the series. And I love that it's so brilliantly done that you don't have to point it out. It's just automatic. And right. there's fantastic characters in here that are females, and you love them. Right. And you don't have to make a point of it standing out because right. it stands oh, out. Only it here. automatically stands out. Right. And they're they're just as brilliant, and they're beautiful, and they've got great quirks, and they've got own individual personalities. And again, each of them is varied and distinct. There are no duplicate girl characters in this franchise. Right. Uh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And there's a lot of them to love. Right. I, Yuraka, I think, is my favorite. And of course, I ship Deku. Right. And Yuraka. And, Paradise Shift. <laughs> and Rascal hasn't mentioned it, but her favorite male is Tenya, Ida. And her favorite female is uh, Jiro. Mm-hmm. And and, oh, and, and yeah, you're right. And if you can see her, here, she's got this giant smile now. <laughs> and, he, and as you notice here, it's more, there's a lot more of an effort here to 
have this be in the spotlight and focus on little else. Mm -hmm. While in Here Academia is there, it happens, but there's not like so much effort into making you like it. It just happens Absolutely. and it's natural and it's fine and it's not anything. Although I have laughed a hundred times a day at Mama because <laughs> um there's this uh, controversy that they have tried to put in that um, Momo Yarozu is offensive oh. and, oh. <laughs> and oh she's offensive because her uh, outfit is uh, very revealing and uh, Mama has just gone off on these people because it doesn't make sense because of the album that's how the cork works. Why? I remember the first time I saw her, I <laughs> said, oh, why is so much of her skin showing? You said, it's her cork and it has to be exposed so it works. I said, oh, okay. And that was it. And there was never anything else I had to say about it. I don't understand the big deal. We have characters that are naked on TV here. You have characters that are even more naked on commercials and you're worried about this girl's body being exposed so she can use her quirks. I mean, what? it's like you have a problem with women being beautiful and and voluptuous <laughs> women come in all shapes and sizes and, and genders so so what she's got all her stuff out it's not offensive to me i don't care yeah it's like oh that's offensive so they they even done on uh, tv in different countries well they just censor by having the giant blur and the people said you know the blur is more distracting than our outfit and now <laughs> and then you've had some say but the children guess what this is not an anime for children this is not a manga for children but if your children happen to read it okay but i guarantee you they've seen worse than momo yarazu's outfit her pro outfit they've seen worse than her pro outfit on tv and movies and magazines and the internet yes they they've seen worse than momo it's like you like so yeah, give us a break give us a break and her outfit doesn't need to be changed no one's outfit needs to be changed. No one's outfit is offensive. Uh, get a life. <laughs> okay. Oh my you God. You brought it up. Yeah. yeah. Direct all hate mail to Rascal. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, 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 I don't care. It's not offensive. And so what that Horikoshi likes women? <laughs> so what he likes women? That's basically what all comes down to. Come on, Mountain Lady. Right. I mean, let's... You can just keep going. And to me, these characters are not offensive. They're tongue-in-cheek. They're funny. And in the end, they're pro heroes. In the end, they kick ass. In the end, they're brilliant and smart. In the end, they're representing women in a way that doesn't embarrass me. I'm not embarrassed by any woman that's in this franchise. <laughs> and like we saw this one um, tweet where it says the... I'm going to say some facets of the female fandom are embarrassed by the representation of women in the fandom. And they said, but the men aren't. We're not embarrassed by the representation of the men in the fandom. They all got their shirts off and muscled and running around. And, be, and they're like, we're not embarrassed at all. Well, guess what? Neither are we as right. women. I am proud of Horikoshi and I'm proud of the characters that he draws to represent every spectrum of of gender. He's got uh, transgender. He's got um, you got, you got some LGBT characters yes, as well. Yes, thank you. Let's just say both for heroes and villains. Yes, he's got um, multi-diverse characters. He's got characters of all heights. He's got characters of all ages. Right. I mean, he pretty much seems to represent the broadest spectrum of humanity there is and i guarantee you if you're not seeing it just give them a minute you will see it right you will see your representation and that's another <laughs> thing that makes it fantastic right so now we know we've gone on much longer than we want because we love 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 my hair academia if you love us as much as we do let us know in the comments below and we don't care how long your comments are we can be love, paragraphs long yes we love comments positive comments and positive feedback and even if you happen to disagree when you put it in a way that explains why we love reading it as well yes so don't forget to comment yes 
And be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get updates of our pause animation videos. Yes. Go beyond and go plus ultra. Yes! <laughs> so, thank you so much for watching. I'm Oscar Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a fantastic day. Peace. Sunlight from the sky in my pocket Give it to you later on in the form of a locket